I made an almost one hour long video criticizing the idea that Marxism and wokeism, among others, are Gnostic. These ideas come primarily from Eric Vogelin, a 20th century political philosopher, and are now propagated by James Lindsay, a mathematician and atheist author who was previously a leftist and now is a classical liberal. I'm making this video as a shorter version of the previous one, which I'll link in the description, so that the essential arguments stand out as clearly as possible, and my critics won't have to waste one hour of their precious time on something that might create discomfort to them anyway. I'm just shortening their agony. I'll also address some of the criticisms I received to the first video, so let's start. My claim is that Gnosticism has no direct influence on Marxism nor on wokeism, but also not on positivism, on psychoanalysis in the purest sense, on progressivism, on fascism, and on communism as well. I make the distinction between Marxism and communism because Vogeling wrote about them separately, and also to address some of the criticisms I received for saying that Marxism is a modern ideology, a framework and not just a process. But that's reductionist, pedantic and beyond the point. Now, when we talk about Gnosticism, we generally refer to the early Christian heresy, which viewed the material world as a lesser or evil creation of the Demiurge, who is the false god who came about as an abortion of Sophia, one of the beings we find in the Pleroma. Adam is a creation of the Demiurge, but through the help of Sophia and the serpent of the Garden of Eden, man liberates himself from the tyranny of the Demiurge. But humans are still trapped in the material world. They still need a way out and this is offered by Gnosis, the secret knowledge of spiritual mysteries. Gnosis is not for all humans. The pneumatics, who are the spiritual types, have it easier. The psychics still have some hope for salvation. Well, there is no hope for the helix, the completely materialistic human types. So we have a distinct hierarchy among the human species. There's also a clear distinct hierarchy of spiritual beings in the Gnostic cosmos, on top of which we find the real God. As we can see, Gnosticism is a dualistic and spiritual philosophy. It advocates the rejection of the material world and the return to the spiritual, to the Pleroma. This is the point where the two gentlemen in question find the first link between Marxism and Gnosticism. And that link is called alienation, the rejection of the world and the attempt to evade it. They say Gnostics and Marxists or wokeists share the same attitude. It's not me who has a problem, it's the world that is evil. But the Marxists and wokeists Instead of feeling dissatisfied with the material world, pick a fight with the social order and with social constructs, trying to overthrow them and to deconstruct them. But who created the social order? Who created the social constructs? Well, the capitalist bourgeois class, of course. So now we have our new modern demiurge, but it's not a metaphysical being not a psychic being to be more precise, there's nothing spiritual going on, it's just an evil social class making society a prison for all of us. This is what James Lindsay claims. I don't know if you could find a more forced analogy to prove the supposed Gnostic nature of Marxism. There certainly are some commonalities if we abstract from most of the essential elements of these philosophies, but the overall differences in the framework on which they operate and in the goals that they have are so big that those commonalities do not legitimize any association between these philosophies in the sense in which we find in James Lindsay and Eric Vogelin. Marxism is materialistic, Gnosticism is definitely not. For the Marxist, matter is good, 
or at least neutral, for the Gnostic it's evil. Marx wanted to humanitize the eschaton to bring about the utopia, the Gnostic does not. He wants to evade, not to change the world. Marx wished for a political subversion of the social dominant class. The Gnostic does not. He doesn't deal with politics. Marxism operates on the political and the economic level. Gnosticism does not. Marx advocated for equality, and so do the postmodern philosophers who like to emphasize how equal every single individual is to one another. Gnosticism does not, because it believes in ontological and spiritual hierarchies. In Gnosticism, we have a dualism between the physical world and the spiritual world. In Marxism and Wokeism, we don't. The Gnostic is called so because he has a secret knowledge of the spiritual mysteries. The Marxist and Wokeist do not have any such secret knowledge of spiritual mysteries. And I emphasize spiritual mysteries because the argument brought forward by James Lindsay is that Marxists and Wokeists do have a kind of Gnosis. That in itself is a dubious claim, but I'll give him that they sometimes behave obnoxiously as if they were the only people who actually understand the philosophy they adhere to. Yet that's not Gnosis in the actual sense of the word because no spiritual mysteries are implied, which is the essential characteristic in the definition of the word Gnosis. That's just mostly a defense mechanism which can bring about some obscuritist literature. Can there be a similarity in their attitudes? Maybe, maybe not. But such a marginal parallel would not make either Marxism nor Wokeism Gnostic. As paralleled between Christian morality and Marxist and postmodern morality, though make the latter Christian. We can even find similarities between Christian principles and Satanist principles advocated by some Satanist sects. Does this make Satanism Christian? No, because in its essence, it's the exact opposite. Only a surface level analysis could lead to that conclusion. And that's what we are dealing with in Olinsky's and Vogelin's work. A surface level analysis that ignores what lies at the core of the philosophies merged together by them. From a symbolic point of view, we might give Vogelin some credit for correctly noticing that the figure of Prometheus, which is used by the young Marx in his doctoral thesis as a symbol of his attitude, has a real correlation with Gnosticism because we can associate it with the serpent from Genesis who tempted Eve to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The serpent is instrumental in man's liberation in the Gnostic mythos. So is Prometheus who brings the fire of the gods to humankind in Greek mythology. This is an actual interesting connection. Yet it's not sufficient to prove that Marxism is Gnostic when the differences are still so overwhelming. Vogelin at first uses Gnosticism as commonly understood, meaning as the early Christian heresy, but then he starts to apply the term arbitrarily to Marx, Nietzsche, Hegel and Heidegger. We might be a little indulgent in Hegel's case. Although he clearly wasn't a Gnostic in the proper sense of the word, he did have a spiritual framework. He was influenced by mystics such as Jacob Boma. And when someone attempts to read his obscure writings, the only way to make sense out of them is if we apply some esoteric and metaphysical understanding as means of interpretation. Hegel has also been associated with Hermeticism, and one of the replies I got to the previous video is that, well, Vogelin's only mistake was to use the word Gnosticism, whereas he should have talked about Hermeticism. Unfortunately, his quote unquote only mistake is the whole thesis of all of his work, and it's a huge mistake, one which, from what I know, 
He did admit later on in his life as he regretted using the word Gnosticism in the way he did. James Lindsay has glimpses of self-awareness too in regards of the term Gnostic, saying that we might actually need a better word. But it's not that we need a better word, we need to stop making the wrong connections and start making the right ones. If we want to point a finger towards someone who would be a prime candidate for being a modern Gnostic, why not consider Carl Gustav Jung? His work relies on the analysis of actual Gnostic myths, and he incorporates some of the Gnostic ideas in his theories. There's also a Jung Codex named in his honor, which are actual Gnostic texts from Nag Hammadi. But no, Jung is not worthy of Lindsay's consideration apparently, because the real Gnostic is Karl Marx for some weird reason. Hitler, ironically enough, is another candidate in the mind of others. Now, these are obvious, absurd claims that wouldn't have needed any rebuttal if it wasn't for the fact that many people fell for this really odd magic trick. Because this is what it is, a magic trick. Nobody who is well educated on the subject and has an impartial view will agree with Lindsay's and Vogelin's assessment of things. But some of those who are with Lindsay on this, as Lindsay himself, have the goal to prove that Marxism and wokeism are actual religions. The problem is that they opted for the weirdest route possible. It's quite self-evident that ideologies in general have a quasi-religious feel to them and the people who follow them act like religious believers. This doesn't mean that there's a necessary connection with Gnosticism, because most certainly there isn't. And I'm sure Lindsay has received a similar kind of criticism, particularly from Christians, to which he likes to reply that there's not only that narrow definition of Gnosticism, which considers only the early Christian heresies, yet while he indeed is broadening the term so that it almost becomes meaningless, he still uses the same exact tropes of alienation and the demiurgic powers from the same early Gnostic sects to make the connection with modern and postmodern ideologies. So his reply to those extremely legitimate criticisms really does not make any sense considering that he still uses that narrow definition to make the connections that he wants to. And to conclude, you can see that in the esoteric traditions you always have some kind of Gnosis, a secret spiritual knowledge. Yet if we want to be precise, we would not define them as Gnostic so that there would not be any confusion between the particular kind of philosophy with its unique tropes that has been developed in early Christianity and other schools of thought that certainly share a lot more aspects with Gnosticism than Marxism and Wokeism ever did. So distinctions, definitions, correct correlations these are fundamental so that we don't create a completely fantastical boogeyman such as the quote-unquote Gnostic postmodern Marxist out of a really messy way of thinking. What is ironic is that if we actually listen to what someone like Judith Butler has to say, an actual postmodern wokeist philosopher by Lindsay's standards, she claims that her ideas are just a fuller expression of democratic principles. So the same principles on which James Lindsay is standing, meaning liberal democracy or liberal democratic ideas, pushed to the extremes have led to this. And the atheist, modernist and materialist framework on which Lindsay operates has a lot more in common with Marxism than Gnosticism ever had.